Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. I am so excited for today's video because I have a few of these videos up, but it's not updated. So what I've decided to do is take all of my five star reads from the past like two and a half, three years since I've started doing booktube, put them all into one video so you have just one video to come to so you don't have to go through all my previous videos. If you want to find some of my five star reads, if you want recommendations and you want to read some books that I'm in love with, I have decided to put all of them and accumulate all of them into this video. So if you see books in my previous previous five star reads videos that are not in this one that means I probably don't think it's a five star read anymore or I would need to reread it to refresh my memory see if it's a five star read now because as a reader since my first five star reads like video showing you guys what books I consider five stars my chase in books has completely completely changed so I've decided to just put it all into this video and show you guys all of my five star reads from 2020 to now that have stuck with me and I still consider five star reads I give a one star if it's just a book that's not for me I can barely get through and it's just nothing about it that I enjoy. I would never recommend it. Two Star is a book that I got through, but I didn't really like. I wouldn't recommend it, but I didn't absolutely like hate it. It was just like not for me. Three Star is just mid. Enjoyed it for what it was. I would recommend it. I think someone else would like it, but I didn't like it, but I didn't enjoy it. And it's just not a book that I like. Four Star is like the majority of books that I read. I enjoy. Maybe there's a couple things I didn't love about the book, but it was easy to get through. I liked the story. I would recommend it, but it didn't give me a five star feeling. And when you get that five star feeling, I think you just know. Because when I'm reading a book that's gonna be a five star, I just like wanna binge it, but I wanna also savor it. And once I finish a book that I know is five star, it's like I could see myself rereading this like over and over and over again. And I would still absolutely love the story, love the characters, love the writing, love everything about it. So all of these books I would reread many times over again. And that's how I know it's a five star read. There's just a feeling about it. I wanna recommend it to everyone. I want everyone I know to read it. I wanna just talk about it for the rest of my life. And that's what I do with most of these books. That's why you've probably heard me recommend them and talk about them so much that it's just like girl stop but I can't because I love them so much and I want to share the love that I have for these books with you guys we're gonna get right into it there's a lot more than I expected these ones have stuck around have stuck in my mind I'm recommending them left and right so let's just get right into it so you guys technically could go on my goodreads i think and go through all the books that i've read and see which ones i've rated five stars i think you can do that on there i did the same thing and i wrote down all the ones that are five stars to this day I think that these are in order of when i have read them so from 2020 and then the most recent will be or the last book i talk about the most recent ones I think that makes sense. First book, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, which shout out this book because they just showed the casting for, I don't know if it's a show or movie coming out. I think it's a show, but the casting is so amazing. It's exactly how I pictured Pip and Ravi. I am so excited. This is basically a YA mystery trilogy. You can read the first one and just stop there, but you can also continue the story. But the end of this kind of gets wrapped up, but you could continue. Anyway, I did read all three, but the first one is the only one that I gave five stars. And I think this still holds up to this day. It was just so fast paced, kept me on my toes. I felt like a detective when I was reading this because Pip as the main character is trying to figure out a murder that went on in her hometown. And it was so interesting being her point of view going back through all of these little details and things that went on throughout her town and the people in it and like trying to figure out what really happened. So it was interesting going through her point of view and like going along with her. And then the ending, I didn't guess. I think I have a reading vlog from so long ago of me reading this. I think it has spoilers in it. I'm really not sure, but it was fast paced. It was fun. It was everything you want in a YA little murder mystery. And it's becoming a show. So I am so excited to see this come to the screen. Then we have a few books from the Addicted Calloway Sister series. Honestly, I was going through and I don't remember which ones I gave five stars, which ones I gave four stars because I have them on my Goodreads as a different ratings, but in my head I remember saying I don't know. These are the ones that I remember giving five stars. Addicted for now. I think I gave four stars to the rest of them and I'm gonna be so completely honest. I don't know which one in the series this is. Like is this the third? Is this the... I don't know. But I just know that this series as a wholly addicted series, not the Calloway Sisters, just like Lily and Lo, I didn't fall in love with until I think the second book in the series. The first one wasn't my favorite. So I feel like I always recommended this series if someone wants a long series, a found family series, one you can get really connected with. But I always say that I didn't love the first one, so to keep it going, because after the first one, you kind of connect with them more and you see more of their story and their relationship. Lo's addicted to alcohol, Lily's addicted to sex, and they kind of enable each other. They're also childhood friends, they're family friends, so they've grown up together and they're kind of fake dating around their family to help each other in their addiction. 
connections. So you see that in the first book and then it goes on with their relationship and it grows and you see all of this and you also see their siblings and their family and their friends come together and it's just the best found family I think in any series that I've ever read in my entire life. Calloway Sister series, the first book you get of the other two couples. I have the new cover, shout out to you for sending this to me. It's so beautiful. This is my favorite book in the whole entire series, my favorite couple in the whole entire series. I think once you got to this book you saw a lot of Lily and Lo and then you get crumbs of this couple in the Addicted series. So when you get to this one I was just so excited to see more of them. Their dynamic was amazing. They are my favorite couple probably in the entire world. Like I'm obsessed with them. This was my favorite out of I think the whole entire series like Calloway and Addicted. And then you go into this one which I don't have the new cover for. I actually have all the old covers that I was actually reading when I read these books. And this one is about another couple. This is the last couple you kind of get introduced to and then it kind of follows along with everyone again. But this one I gave five stars because you get crumbs of them in Kiss the Sky in the Addicted series and having the crumbs of them I was just like how is this gonna happen? How is the relationship gonna start? Like I need the details and I need their point of views and it's all dual point of view which is amazing. But you get like the drama and it just feels so real. It feels like you're reading a reality show with these characters. It's just so amazing. Like the series is so 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 worth it. I will say I didn't finish. Like I have two books left because it's such a long series but just know that it's so amazing. It's so worth it. All in all I would give it a five star as a series so amazing. We love the Addicted Calloway Sister series. Darling Venom by Parker S. Huntington. This was the first romance-y type of book that was a little bit thicker for me that I read in my beginning of my reading journey because I read this book a few years ago that felt more than a romance and I think it kind of introduced me to the type of romances that I like. Like I like when it's deeper and it's not very surface level rom com -y, and this is what this one was. It's kind of like an enemies to lovers type of thing but their relationship isn't the sole purpose of the book. Like you get so much more with it and I really 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 enjoyed that and I loved her writing of this. I loved the storyline of this. The whole thing was just so good it kind of like tugged on my heartstrings for the first time in like a book that I really really enjoyed so that was a five star and I still recommend it to this day to so many people I just think it's like such a good book my favorite book of all time like if you take any five star read from this video honestly I would recommend any of these books but like just know that this book holds a special place in my heart. I have these three covers of them. I have the original. I've read this twice now. It's very worn in, annotated. I'm obsessed with the feel of this book. And then I have the new cover that came out. And then I have the one that also just came out. This one I found on Christina Lauren's bio on Instagram. I think it was like linked in there or something, but it's like hardcover. It has their pictures on it. Like I'm just obsessed. If I haven't said the title of it yet, is Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. And this introduced me to childhood friends to lovers, second chance romance, and obsessed. Childhood Friends to Lovers is one of my favorite tropes of all time and this is like the blueprint for it. The way that these two met and connected when they were younger was so wholesome, was so sweet and just seeing that just felt so just like comforting because they just read together and they enjoy their time together and they just have this connection with each other that they don't even realize that they have. I'm obsessed with this book like in every way shape and form. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Like I recommend this to everyone too. Like if you have watched my five star reads up until this point or watch any of my videos I feel like you have probably read this book and I hope you have. And if you haven't, here's your chance to. Here's your sign to. Then we have the Knock 'em Out series by Lucy Score. When I read this last year or two years ago, 2021, Oh, it's been a couple of years now. But when I read this, it introduced me to Lucy Score. Absolutely obsessed with her writing. I just think it was so fast paced. It's a thicker romance book, but it went so quick because her writing is just so fun and entertaining and the banter and the dialogue, like everything just flows so well. And I didn't want to stop reading this. I loved this book. This was my introduction to Small Town and Grumpy Sunshine. And then this is the most recent one that just came out. Things we have from The Light and then the third one's coming out soon. So I'm so excited to get the third one. That's gonna be, I think, my favorite of the series. It's basically about two characters from this series. They're all just like interconnected series about different characters within it. So this is about Knox and Naomi, and then you have his brother Nash, and then you have the third one that's coming out, Sloan and Lucian, which I think is gonna be another five star. So it's just overall five star series for me. Thought it was entertaining. I just think the banter is so fun with all of her books that I've read so far, and she just does such an amazing job writing a book that I just wanna sit down and binge. It's like rom com -y, but then you also get little deeper parts, and the story's always entertaining, and the side characters are always so much fun, and I just am obsessed with Lucy Square's writing. But this was my first by her that I gave five stars, and I also gave the second one five stars. Then we have the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey, I believe. This is actually a five book series that you can read as a series, but you can also read it as one big book because each book in the series is actually like a hundred-ish pages, so it's really like a 500, 600 page book. So you can do it either way. I did it reading it five book as a series because it went so quick. Reading a hundred pages and then finishing that and you feel so accomplished because you finished the first book and you go into the second one that's like 90 pages, it just feels accomplishing because you just go through it so quick. But anyway, this book was just so fun because it mixed two of my favorite things. Like 
Criminal Minds was my favorite show in high school and it mixed that with romance. You have a main girl character who is the serial killer and the main guy is part of the FBI. He's a profiler and he's on the case of the girl he is now dating. And he doesn't know that. It was so entertaining, so fun. It did get deep. It did have reasons for why she does what she does. And I just loved the mix of it. And it was just like cliffhangers after cliffhangers and I like needed to finish it. And I remember prolonging the end of the last book because I didn't want it to end. Overall, it's a five star series. I think it gives some four stars because I read it as the five book series, but so good. Highly recommend if you like those two things mixed together. One of my favorite series ever. In all, I'm gonna put this together, but we have back here the Shatter Me series. It rated, I think, Ignite Me, Restore Me, and then a bunch of the ones at the end five stars, and the rest I think were four stars. The last one I think is Believe Me, but my friend is borrowing that. Honestly, I think that this series in all is a five star read. I'm obsessed with the setting and the scenery of this, the dystopian world, but also with this, the characters in here, and the way she wrote this was so fast paced. Like, I binged these books so quick and the series is pretty long and once I get into a series I'll either stop I'll get burnt out but this series I did not want it to end there's like a romance that ensues there's different tropes that go on as you continue the series but you also get like action and dystopian world and side characters that are part of like this found family eventually and you get another character that becomes like a huge main plot point and a main character in the series you get his point of view eventually and all of it together is just so amazing and I'm obsessed. After I finished one of them, I wanted to read the novella. I wanted to continue to the next one. Like I wanted to keep going. And I remember the first one, I think I actually gave three stars because I didn't love it. But this is another one where you have to keep going. It just gets so, so good the more you go on. And I feel like that's hard to do in a series. Like I feel like some series feel like you're dragging out as you keep going. But up until the last novella, I was obsessed and I still am obsessed. So five star series. Next we have Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. I think that's how you say her name, but this is actually a literary fiction book. This is the first and I think the only literary fiction book that I have ever given five stars. I'm not a literary fiction fan, just like a plain old fiction. I need some romance or I need some mystery, some fantasy. Like I need something within that. But this one was just so good because I think the setting of it, it takes place actually in the 1970s, but it was like summertime 1970s and you got like this girl who babysits or nannies for this family. You get that child and the parents and they are just like these characters like I loved the way that they acted they were very free-spirited they're always playing music and it was just such an amazing setting and characters and little family that she joins writing of this was very just character driven you're just following her the main character who I think is like 13 or 14 along nannying and joining this family and kind of like finding herself in a way oh my god it was so 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 good rock paper scissors by Alice Feeney the feeling I got from the end of this book like I still remember in my head of reading this and binging it like I read this in a few hours like I could not put it down and that's how I knew Alice Finney was about to become my favorite new mystery thriller author author in general this was about to become my favorite book five stars like immediately after finishing it she's one of these writers where she kind of like is vague with some of the chapters but at the end of most chapters she'll give like a little bit of like a hint of like a what's the word it just was an amazing mystery thriller. Honestly, I got to the end and I got to the plot twist and I actually like audibly like gasped, could not believe it. I had to tell everyone about this book and I still do recommend this book all the time. This was the start of my Alice Feeney binge. I finished all of her books and I'm just like seriously obsessed with her writing. She's my favorite mystery thriller author. This book was just so good. The plot twist got me and it wasn't even just that, like it continued. Like I was just getting whiplash at the end of it and this is just a a five star read. Moving on, we have Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This is part of the Six of Crows duet, the cover of this and the Six of Crows that also is this cover but in red. And I immediately got it before a book depository closed down because I wasn't going to get it, but then they were closing and I was like, this is my chance. And I bought the two of them. Going into Six of Crows was very intimidating. I did not understand it the first 200 pages and I almost DNF'd that book and like completely gave up. But I am so glad that I did it because Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom are two of my favorite books ever. I gave Six of Crows four stars just because the beginning I literally could not comprehend anything. Getting into Crooked Kingdom, my first five star that I just felt, I just felt a lot for this book. The little found family in the fantasy is one of my favorites because all of their personalities are so different. You wouldn't expect them to all be friends and banter with each other and trust each other. I'm so obsessed with the characters in this book. Then also you get the mastermind of Kaz and it's just so good. The ending of this book, I remember crying at the end of it. I did not want it to end. I would read a hundred books with these characters in them, like a thousand books with these characters in them. I'm obsessed. Don't be intimidated by Six of Crows. You just have to go with it and just continue reading. I went right into it and I had no fantasy 
experience so if i could do it you guys can do it and i highly recommend because it's five star then we have another fantasy which is actually a ya princess retelling heart of the raven prince by tasanja odette this is part of a series but they're all standalones you could read on their own so i read this one first and it's actually read as like a blind date for a video so i didn't expect this to happen but i immediately gave this five stars because the feeling of this book was just so magical and just fantasy fairy tale and i learned that i love fairy tale type of fantasies it's just a cinderella retelling i loved that princess movie i thought it was so sweet i thought it was fun adventurous you get the princess you get the fantasy and the fae i don't know i was listening to like taylor swift instrumental while reading this and i kind of just binged it her writing is just so easy to get through it's not confusing it flows it gets right into the story like this was just a fun fairy tale five star read and i loved it the other princesses that are in there's like little mermaid snow white ariel like i think she's coming out with a sleeping beauty one it's just fun hawthorne legacy by jennifer lynn barnes is actually the second in the inheritance games series i remember reading that and i think i binged them in like four or five days but the second one one, I immediately gave five stars because the first one was fun. You get into the story. It's about this old man that passes away and gives his will to this random girl who's now thrown into like the rich family. It was fun learning about that, her questioning everything. But once you get into this, you're like thick into the story. You know the characters. You're still trying to figure out what's going on. And this was just fun to go along with because I never read a book that was like riddles and clues and secret passages, but also like a little subplot of romance and the setting was so fun. And the chapters in here, remember, are like literally like three pages each and I was just binging it. I love this. I want to see this as like a show or a movie one that would make my year. Then I have another Alice Feeney book, His and Hers. I remember reading this. I binged it on a vacation actually and I got to the end and that jaw dropped. Like I just did not expect the ending. I feel like at that point I read a few more of Alice Feeney books so I was like on my toes trying to keep up with her and like try to get her but I didn't and I didn't see it coming and she always gets me and I'm obsessed with her writing and this one just like completely threw me for a loop and she got me good so five star and I love her writing so much like I'm just obsessed with her writing then we have if he had been with me by Laura Nolan this was just one of the books that broke my heart and I think about this every single day sometimes I'll be listening in the car to some songs and I'm like that is just Finny and Autumn to a T and this book tells you in the beginning what's gonna happen at the end it basically prepares you for it but you get the buildup of it and you get the history behind it and once it comes it's really abrupt it's really sudden it hurts i still think about them to this day the first book to really actually no there's other books that have tore my heart up but like not in this way i'm like obsessed with this book the writing is just so easy it's ya it's fast paced but it's painful i have daisy jones and the six by chandler jenkins reed and i remember reading this and it just felt like i was watching an interview which was so beyond fun like you have no idea if you have not read this which i feel like it's so popular now the show came out so majority have probably read this but if you have not yet if you're hesitant like i was because i went into this expecting to be like mid three stars but obsessed because i don't like books that are in the like 1900s i don't really like rock band type of books but like this did it for me i have never read a book told in interview style basically in the future the bandmates are older and they're in an interview being asked questions about what happened the timeline of the band how they got to where they are right now and all of the little details between and you kind of are following this story as they're telling it and it's all just dialogue and it's so fun because you get their like personalities as you're reading i also listened to the audiobook of this at some points because people said it's like the best audiobook ever and you get their like different voices and it sounds like real people and it felt like a real band story like i actually googled at one point <laughs> daisy jones and the six i don't know i thought it was real and it just was told so well the writing was amazing i never finished the show which i know i have to do but just know that this book is worth your time it is worth everything this is so good it's just like done so well and i feel like she's like a mastermind coming up with these characters because they feel like legit real people i don't know how she did it but it's so good then we have a ghosted by jm darhauer this is a second chance romance this is a story about a single parent who's kind of like living paycheck to paycheck taking care of her child and then you have this man man who is now a casted superhero and basically like the marvel of this book and he is like the most famous actor ever and back in the day you have the point of view of them when they were in high school meeting he's like slowly wanting to become an actor and you get that little build up but then you're like well what happened to them and then you find out their story they felt really real they felt like real people i just loved their story i loved the end of it i loved the way that she told the past timeline because it was kind of like written as if it was kennedy's journal and i'm just obsessed this story was so fun it was so good it tugged on my heartstrings at some points but i feel like if you love second chance romances you will love this book like it's just so so good then we have by a thread by lucy score i read this book and i was gonna give it like 4.5 but then i remember when i was reading it giggling and just being so obsessed with their like little chemistry going on and the banter was absolutely incredible and i was like why not give it five stars like i don't have to just give five stars to books that make me feel on like a deeper level like no this was fun this was entertaining their chemistry was so much fun to follow along with it's a slow burn it's a grumpy sunshine workplace romance like this was just so so good it's like what i needed banter was amazing it made me like a giddy most of the time and i remember the ending and i was just like 
obsessed. I love Dom. I love Allie. I think this is such a fun, fun book. It's thicker. I feel like all of Lucy's scores are pretty long, but if you want a fast paced, just fun, giddy book, this is like perfect. Then we have the best thing that's ever happened to me since reading, since starting my reading journey. And that is the series of Magnolia Parks. I know that everyone knows how I feel about this series. You're like, girl, we know you don't have to start talking about it. And I won't. I will say though, I gave Daisy Hates the first book after Magnolia Parks four stars, but the rest of them are all five stars. Five star series. It's a thousand star series. This is like ingrained in my soul at this point. The characters felt real and raw. They're not these perfect characters that you're going to get a happily ever after with. No, this is their life and it's what they're going through and they just feel so real. They have flaws and they have issues and it's like what they're going through and it's how they act. Like that's just how their personalities are, what they do from their trauma, from their baggage. Like this is what they do and this is how they grew up and this is how they are now. The storyline is frustrating. The characters get frustrating, but it is so well worth it. Just know going into this, it's not going to be a happy fluffy read. Like you're going to be frustrated. It's going to feel toxic. You're going to feel pain. You're going to wish that things were differently. You're going to want to throw the book at the wall, but in the best way possible. I'm not kidding. This is the best thing I've ever read in my entire life. Anyway, then we have The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. This is actually after Once Upon a Broken Heart and there's a third one coming out this year. If you have not read the series yet, you need to. If you're not a fantasy reader, I don't care. It's like a fairy tale fantasy going into Once Upon a Broken Heart. It's not like confusing in any way. It's YA. It's really fun. You go right into the story. Her writing is so magical, so beautiful. And the story is fun to go along with. It feels like you're in Alice in Wonderland type of vibe, but I don't know. It's just amazing. Getting into this though, so good. I also got this cover from Book Depository before they closed down as well, but the characters, you get more of them and their relationship in this one and them communicating a little bit more, which is what I wanted from the first one. The storyline in this is just so fun. You get to the end and it's just painful. And I love pain in books and this gave it to me. I was in the biggest slump of my life before reading this. I literally felt like I wasn't gonna be able to read again. I was being so dramatic. I was like, this is it for me. But I read this book and it took me right out of my slump. I was ready to get back into reading literally anything. It was so, so, so good. It does leave off on a cliffhanger, but I am so excited to see what she does with the third one. Her writing is amazing. If you haven't read this series or this whatever trilogy duet, I don't know. Read it. It's so good. So worth your time. Beach Read by Emily Henry. I actually got the UK version off of Amazon a few weeks ago, but this was a reread and I actually read this in 2020. I don't know if it was the summer of 2020. I think it was. It was a few years ago and I ended up giving it four stars. I didn't really connect with that much, but after reading how much I've read up until when I reread this a few weeks ago, I feel like I know what I like in books and I can connect more with some things that I like in books and knowing these characters and the story already, I think the reread of it just really like solidified how much I'm obsessed with this book. And I think it's just seeing the cover and the US cover especially. I feel like it gives rom-com vibes, but it's not. It's so much more than that. It just feels so much deeper. Gus is like the blueprint book boyfriend. Like he is the blueprint of absolutely everything. This is like a six star read at this point. I remember rereading it and just like connecting with it on like a whole other level. And the two characters and what they're going through and coming together, they have a special place in my heart. I'm obsessed with this book. And now I have the UK version of Happy Place, which I also got on Amazon. This is by Emily Henry as well. This was a five star read for me and I didn't expect it to be. I didn't expect to love this as much as I did, but if you and your life have gone through a long-term relationship and college and friendships after college and navigating life after college and navigating your job, your friendships, relationships, profession, literally anything in this like age range, I think you would absolutely love this book and you would give it five stars as well because I have never related to a book so much in my entire life, related to a main character so much in my entire life. Like everything she was saying and going through and talking about, I was like, that's me. But not only that and like connecting with it, I think that the storyline of this was so beautiful and so amazing. And I think that this just like made sense. It felt really real and it felt like something that real people actually go through. And that's what I loved about this. I loved the friendships in this. I loved that everyone had their own thing that they were going through and that they were struggling with, but you saw them all come together and just show that things are important. Friendship is important. Being happy is important. Love this book. And last, but certainly not least, we have my most recent five star, which was Powerless by Elsie Silver. This is part of the Chestnut Spring series, which is the little cowboy series that is out. There's four books out right now. There's another one coming out, but this one is the third in the series. This was the one I was most excited for while reading the first two because you get crumbs of these characters and their relationship, but he's a hockey player. She's a ballerina. I'm obsessed with this because by the time we got to this book, you have the first two and you know those characters, you know their personalities, you know everyone's relationships. So getting all of them in here, it was just perfect. Amazing. I loved the main character Jasper and what he went through and his relationship with Sloane and their banter and what they went through, their history. And I don't know, everything about this was just 
was perfect to me. I couldn't put it down. I was annotating and tabbing like a crazy woman. I'm obsessed with Elsie Silver's writing. It's just so fast paced. It makes me laugh at some points, but it also makes me like feel for the characters at some points. It's a good mix of everything that I love in books. And I'm obsessed with this series. It's what started me on my kick of small town country books. Like I can't stop now. I want to go to the country because of her. So those are all of the books that are up until this point from when I started my booktube career that are standing still at five star reads, six star reads. Like some of these are just like past that point, but I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys now can see all the books that I give five stars. Maybe get a little taste or a little glimpse of books that I enjoy, books that I like. I know there's like a range of different genres and types of books, but these are the ones that are still standing at five stars, which is like a hard thing to do because I feel like after reading so much, I'm such a picky reader. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys read some of these books if you haven't yet. I know a bunch of these are popular, so maybe you have at this point, but maybe you'll read one now. Let me know if you do. Let me know some of your five star reads if you have any that are same as mine. If you have any books that you think I would give five stars based off of these five stars, please let me know. I am on my knees begging for another five star read. I want to feel a five star read so bad. And I feel like after reading a bunch at this point, it's harder for me to get a five star read because I'm like pickier. I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you hopefully in the next one. Bye!